fireball coming out of my hand. Oh, you're like a Ryu from Street Fighter. Hadouken! Hadouken! Okay. Here we go, everybody. Uh, enjoy yeah. this and sit back and enjoy this. All right? So here it goes. Starts in three, two, one. Look at this first album cover. I've been trying to show you guys to go look at these artist albums. Uh, and especially from the Mark of the Beast series, we broke down a lot of the symbolism in that, okay? Whoa! The Morning Stream with Scott and Brian and a caveman. Hello everyone, welcome back to TMS. It's the morning stream for Monday, July 20th. It is the year 2020, so we got a 2020 going on. I guess we'll have another Almost, we'll have another yeah. bunch of those until the end of the year. I don't know why I think it's a big deal. We're going to have uh, uh, five more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. August, it's dumb, it, it's dumb for me October. to point it out though, because every month we'll have a 20th in it. Yes. Yeah. But it's no dumb. Month- no month is the 20th month, so unfortunately we won't get a 2020, 2020. No, we won't get that. And that would be actually unique and something worthy of commentary. But instead, I, every 20th, make a big deal out of the 2020. <laughs> Whoa! You, you know, you're a resident numerologist, Scott, which oh, uh, which we love about you. Yeah. And- it's the star of numbers on ABC. Check it out. Thursdays, right. 7 p.m. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, we're here. we got a show to do. We're glad to be here. Hope you all had a nice weekend. I did. Uh, we got. Uh, I had a whole day off on Friday. That was nice. I want to do yeah. got to do that more often that was sweet uh <clears throat> but it was uh, pretty unplugged too i just sort of did stuff with the kids and kim i played that game brian sent me which was really fun frantic <laughs> frantic dude. good time yeah a lot of dude talking you and- find you find that there's a lot of dudes that sound like is it the little tiny dude mm-hmm. or the one that's spelled dude or is it the wavy one that's dude yeah like the stoner dude <laughs> here's what we did we did this uh we we figured out pretty quickly that once you know the handful of dude possibilities, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's easy to then recognize them if somebody just goes, dude, they, you know they mean the little one. The little tiny one. Yeah. And so, Well, it could just also be the one that's dude with a period. It could be, but we all got to this pattern where it was like, dude. And then everybody knew that meant the one with the, pa- <laughs> with the period. And so, yeah. so once you get the patterns down, you'd mm-hmm. think it would be like, oh, well, this is just now too easy or whatever. But that's the trick of the game. Once you get that <laughs> stuff down... Then it's just a speed match. It totally is, yes. Because there's two levels of it, yeah. Yeah, because right. everybody knows what the what the what the patterns are now. So now it's down to how quick are you and how fast mm-hmm. are you agreeing with somebody else? Is yeah. we had a blast. It was really fun. So they, uh, I think they've got an expansion. Mm-hmm. I would be surprised if they don't. I think I saw that there was like more dude or something like that. And it really is a matter of uh, adding just a few more dudes that kind of could be said the same way as the existing dudes and uh and, and mm. what's involved with that but they mix that up a little bit do they yeah exactly yes well um i was hoping you were, the <laughs> expansion was called bro and they were gonna add some bros in there. <laughs> that'd be great yeah. bro and yeah. so it's like uh bro bro yeah. dude bro yeah. bro dude exactly <laughs> um at props and recline and i had the same idea so i i didn't see your post Bruh. on props and recline but i'll Bruh. still give you i'll still give you credit there you go Anyway, big weekend. Uh, uh, other than that, lots of busy stuff going on. We got a film sack out there if you guys want to go check it out, and uh, lots of fun. Also, this morning, if you're bored, uh, go check out the latest Frog Pants Plays Daily. That's up on the YouTube channel. You can also check out the latest Fred and Can comic, which is up at FredandCan.com. That episode or the the, the new I call it episodes. The newest installment of Fred and Can makes me itch. That's uh, what it does. It, it just should. makes me itch. It's actually based on two things. So sometimes people always say, "Where, where, do, where do you where, uh, where do you get your comic ideas?" Mm-hmm. Although they don't go wordy, wordy, wordy like wordy, I just wordy, did. Wordy, wordy, wordy. Yeah. Is it? Uh, is this when you talk to Porky Pig? Is that <laughs> something was. Something. Abba, 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 where do you get your Where do you get your ideas, Scott? I got all hijacked there for a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, this particular one came from two things: the the concept that he's becoming a super soldier, and the idea of a weird nanite injection, and all those ideas. Mm-hmm. That's from playing uh, this Warhammer 40, 40k game I've been playing this week, uh, which I won't get into too much. But that thing makes me think of ideas like that. And then the other part, the mosquito part, is based on the ten or so mosquito bites I have on my left leg. <laughs> I don't know what happened. My right leg, none, none, not a single bite. Left leg. All over the place. What is it about my left leg? 
Is that the meaty uh, one? Is that the... It's the tastier one. It's uh, we all know, as we know, yeah. the left side of your body is more tender and flavorful <laughs> than the right. That was a little too energetic for current. Uh... <laughs> I know it's way too energetic. Yeah. He's really slowed down these days. Yeah. But uh, but isn't that a little bit weird? I mean, is the blood better over here? Like, I don't know why they went over here for this leg and not the right. Because it seems like... It, they... it easily could be... Because they do it via smell. So, I mean, there just could be something about your left leg that smelled different than your right leg. And it was just it was just more <laughs> attracted to it. I'm going to make... It seems weird. But, yeah. like, any, any number of things. Like, you could have accidentally spilled something on it when you were making a sandwich earlier like uh oh i didn't think uh, of that that's possible yeah yeah they're, they're, they're a myriad myriad of things that could yeah. have uh they're pretty e but they're pretty equally spaced though they're all over the place so it would have to have been a big splash you know later i'm making kim smell my two legs smell this leg oh, then this please. leg honey let's see what she says tell kim please tell kim that this part of the deal was not my idea <laughs> that it was really just the original theory that was that was uh from me yeah. not the not the hypothesis of, uh, or the or the the formula or whatever it is. I'll say the proof, the yeah. proof theorem of smelling your legs. That's right. I'll say, honey, I have a deal. She'll say, what kind of a deal? And I'll say, <laughs> besides, wouldn't matter now because you've taken a shower between now and when you may have spilled something on your leg. That's there, true. The mosquitoes with you. That's yeah. totally true. I've had them for a couple of days, and the other, and the funny thing is, I was out there again in the same place in the backyard last night, and no, no bites overnight. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, dude. I don't freaking know. Although my brother-in-law caught two um, uh, two raccoons in somebody's roof, somebody's uh, some uh, not roof, but like the part of the you know where the roof is, and sometimes you have another part of your roof that like intersects with it, and it creates like oh, yeah. a little space or whatever. Mm -hmm. They had a couple yep. of raccoons living in there, trying to dig their way into their home, and uh, Steve went and set up a trap and caught these two raccoons, and we think one of them's pregnant and the other one's the dad. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. They didn't kill him. Can they I just... take him to Maury Povich first and uh, find out if uh, you are not the father? Yep. Yep. We're going to see if we can't. And if it does, if they, if they say no, it's on to Jerry Springer. We know where to go. <laughs> Good. Exactly. Throwing chairs yep. and at least yep. we'll get a nice final thought from Jerry about the whole situation. This is a surprise to me, though. Apparently, Animal Control, who normally you would call and say, hey, there's a giant yeah. snake in the pool or whatever, you know, like whatever the there's thing is. Snake in my boot. Yeah. yeah there's a snake uh -huh. in my boot. Get over here. Uh, normally you call them and I thought you would call them and they would come take care of stuff. I've seen that animal planet show and they, that's what they did on there. Um, that's not what they do here. You, if, if you have trapped them, if, if you trap the two raccoons, then they'll come and take care of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't trap them, mm -hmm. you're on your own. I, 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 I what do we, that seems like, uh, they're, they're not doing the controlling you're doing the controlling. They're doing the relocation. It shouldn't be animal control. It should be animal relocation. Yeah, that's what they should call them. I mean, whatever my taxes are paying for, it's not what I thought. Because I thought they came out and took care of whatever wild animal you had. But no, they don't do that. They no. you you trap it and then they come that's and right. dispose of it or move it or whatever. Um, they did. Yeah. I, I, my understanding is they relocate these things at least fifty miles away, because anything less than that, and they'll still find their way back to the place that they were 49.9 miles and they'll find their way back <laughs> 50 somehow is the magic number <laughs> well it's like i'm you know, not paying for an uber for that long a drive forget it's, it it's like six uh six foot social distancing what if you're five point <laughs> right you know five five feet 11 inches nope you're catching it you're catching the covid yeah. but six feet yeah. six feet you're safe it's like sorry you got the rona Oh, good I mean, news. Uh, our, 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 yeah. I guess we could let him say it when he comes on, but uh, Dunaway tested negative. So that's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we'll but see. But we're if not he... telling his company so that he can keep staying at home and playing video games. That's right. Nobody say anything to where he works. Okay. <laughs> Which I think is a local public utility. And uh, uh, that's the reason it he is. has to go work there. But yeah. anyway, yay for Brian. He'll be on today and uh, we'll uh, have some fun with him a little bit later. A couple of quick things. You remember Trey? He won won some stuff last week. Do you remember that? I do. I do indeed. All right. Yes. Trey, Trey was really nice, and um, he won a ton of crap, including Mad Max Fury Road. And he sent in kind of a film sackish quick yeah. commentary on fa film tech or on uh, uh, Mad Max Fury Road, and I loved it. So I'm going to read it. Okay. He says, "Hey there, skirt and brisket." Trey from Memphis sending in my Monday morning film review of Mad Max Fury Road. I'll start with a general. I'll start with. I generally enjoyed the movie, and uh, 
Uh, sorry. No. I'll start with I generally enjoy any movie I sit through and make it to the end, and I absolutely love both the Star Wars prequels and the sequels. So judge my critical eye of movies as you will. <laughs> cool. I don't know. I kind of hold the prequel stuff against him a little bit. I'm just feeling a little bit. Uh, just a little. You know, it really depends on your age. Because uh, I think if you're younger than a certain age, I think the you don't hold the the original trilogy in such high regard that the prequels are an abomination. It's a good point. It's hard not to. It's hard not to think that way with Jar Jar Binks, but. <laughs> it's like all the dumb movies we saw when we were kids. I remember thinking Fly, or, uh, Condor Man was the funniest and coolest hero movie I'd ever yeah. seen. And I am sure yeah. that movie doesn't hold up. I'm sure of it. Sure of it. And yeah, we positive. need to film sack that piece of garbage. I'm sure we do. It's got to be on uh, Disney Plus. Oh, maybe. Soon, anyway. Maybe, coming, yeah. Because that, that was a Disney thing, wasn't it? It was, it yeah. It was. Those were the dark yeah. times. The dark times. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they totally were. Anyway, it goes on to say, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, that being Mad Max Fury Road. And we'll most likely watch it again. Yeah, you will. And again and again and again, I say. <laughs> the action sequences were fantastic. Dialogue was great in the way that there was so little of it, uh, which it uh, which it only works because of how brilliantly the story is told visually. I totally agree. I have not seen any Mad Max film, but cultural osmosis has exposed me to some of the ideas of it, but also I understood the world within 15 minutes of the movie without a single minute of backstory. If I had watched this back in 2015, it likely would have uh, had a greater impact on me. Uh, with that being said, it's in my top 25 move- movies anyway. Well, that's pretty good, actually. There's a lot of movies out mm-hmm. there. So if you put it in your top 25, well done. Here's what he says. Very, yeah. Things I now understand after watching. <laughs> I had a baby brother, and he was perfect in every way. Now he knows what we're talking about when yep. we, when we yep. bark that out. I live, I die, I live again. He knows what that means. And he also now understands what witness me means. means. Uh, what gross tray out the most? Nux eating a bug <laughs> off his disgusting hands. That's pretty gross. Yeah. Uh, alternate titles. Because like, like, his hands are dirty. But the bug was clean. <laughs> and if you would have just eaten that with a fork and a plate, then it would have been fine. But Yeah. It's the only yeah. clean creature in the entire wasteland. So <laughs> you're right. better off eating yes. it. Says what gross tray out the most. Already did that. Uh, alternative titles. He called, called it Fallout 40K or Witness My Rictus. That's pretty good. I That's like that good. one a lot. Uh, Twitter post where I sum it up in 140, nope, 280 characters or less. That's how he wrote that. That's great. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road looks like Scott Johnson's favorite movie holds up in 2020 and could even serve as a guide for what 2021 will bring us. Oh, man. Dark, dark take, but I like it. Uh, <laughs> sent from my why did that dude wear a suit with a nipple holes cut out tray. Uh yeah, he he got it right. You got it right, dude. And I'm glad that one, one more soul has been exposed to the greatest one, film. One more cultist drink in the Kool-Aid. That's right. Gulp it down, baby. <laughs> Gulp it down. Brian, I saw photos from you yep. yesterday that looked like you were at a zoo. Tell me you were at a zoo and how that I went. I indeed was at a zoo. So Denver Zoo uh, has been doing this thing where they're they're opening back up. Uh, they need they need money to feed the animals, and so in doing that, they need visitors and they need people to come there and spend money and buy tickets and do things so that they can afford to feed animals. Um, and Tina, I, I basically let Tina dictate what she's comfortable with and what she's not comfortable with. I'm uh, I, I'm not as um, immunocompromised as she is. I'm not at all. I don't think I'm at all immunocompromised. Maybe the sleep apnea a little bit, but. Um, but obviously with her chemo, her former chemo situation, radiation, um, the cancer kind of left her with a slightly compromised immune system. Mm-hmm. So I let her dictate what she feels comfortable with, and it's always within my Venn diagram, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah, you're, you're, you're the one. You let her call the shot, and then you go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the Denver Zoo's been doing this thing now where um, they've been open. They've, uh, they've made a lot of changes. And, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't tell you if I, let me rephrase this. How do I phrase this? <laughs> I felt safe. I can't imagine anything more that they could have done to make me feel safer. Did they put, yeah. did the gorillas have masks? That's what I want to know. Every girl, like everyone, they were carrying six foot bamboo poles. The girls were poking <laughs> each other to keep six feet away from each other. Perfect. Um, no. So, uh, here's, here's all the stuff that they did. Number right. one, you buy your ticket online and you um, you buy it for a window, a two hour window of the zoo. Um, they're not going to come and find you and kick you out if you're there two minutes, two hours and five minutes or whatever. But they really want to be able to maintain um, a consistent 
lower percentage of visitors at the same time uh, for obvious reasons. That's interesting because our zoo is doing the exact same two-hour limit. Yeah. The exact same and it's, thing. And it's must basically be basically it's like, that's as much time really as I need in the zoo. Yeah, it must, uh, be, second, a, must be a best practice thing around the country or something. I, I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, second, the, um, uh, the pathways are all one way now and there's a there's a a path that you take through the whole zoo that gets you to see every exhibit there's even a half path if you if you like eh, i just want a quick i want to see the let me see the uh, the a listers and i don't care about the b lister i need to see the the uh the the tapir i don't need to see the uh globus monkeys but i do want to see the lions and the tigers and the giraffes sure they're a tier i get it they're A tier. They're your A listers. So there's two paths you can take. Each one marked with arrows that, that follow you. That basically take you around the the zoo. Masks required 100 percent of the time, and mm-hmm. they have people on uh, because the water park never opened this year. They've taken the lifeguard chairs from the water park and put them in the zoo, so that that uh, zoo employees can kind of hang out there and see a large, uh, a long way down the the path to make sure people are consistently wearing their masks. Nice. And not, are they, can they, do they, it to get in and then pulling it down. Do they blow a whistle if somebody like infracts the rule or something? I don't, I don't know. I didn't even look to see if they had a whistle. I should have. Oh, that'd be great if they're like, they just can't get the... the, <laughs> the <laughs> like they have a bullhorn. Yeah. yeah. Hey, kid, quit throwing gum at the giraffes or whatever. Exactly, yes. I love this. Uh, so, uh, so there's that. And then you're just basically encouraged to not crowd into the windows or crowd into the exhibits. If you see people kind of lined up along the fence and they're kind of six feet apart, don't try to swedge in between them and, and you know, cut that distance. You wait, wait for one of them to move and you go up and you take their space. And that's easy enough to do. Yeah. Um, everything food wise, if you order food, you do it with an app and then you just um, QR code the app and they give you your food. You pay for it on the, on the thing. So none of that changes hands. It was a really... A really good experience and i saw uh warthogs and i sent you a, a photo of warthogs yep you had, we had a little you me, joke. Uh, it was pretty good you sent me a question tiger mm-hmm. and i then sent you a picture of a cheetah yep it's perfect <laughs> it was perfect it was the exact exchange that one would want <laughs> exactly yeah we knew what we were doing we take tms yeah. wherever we go you guys that's the exactly it's not just you guys it's us too we you know we, yeah. we repeat this garbage as much as uh, as much as you guys do and uh, so it was a really good time. It was we we saw all the animals we want to see. The it was uh, 96 degrees out, but it wasn't sunny, so it was the, the overcastness made the animals come out and be kind of active and walking around. There was a monkey that so we saw the monkey doing the thing you want to see monkeys doing when you go to the zoo. You don't want to see them just sitting there um, picking bugs off of the other monkeys and doing that sort of thing. You want to see them swinging around. And there's this rope that goes right over the people. Mm. Which means the monkey could just drop on us and, oh, and yeah, yeah. eat our faces off. That's right. Um, and he's doing the whole like, <laughs> you know, the whole thing you want to see monkeys doing, which is uh, yeah. uh, going across the rope like uh, arm over arm. And no, no any monkeys vigorously masturbating? Any of that happen? Uh, that's the other thing you want to see the monkeys do. And mm. unfortunately, no, we did uh, not see any monkeys vigorously masturbating. That's too bad. It's always yeah, a it's always a good bad. visit to the zoo when you ha- you happen upon that. That's right, uh, but, so uh, uh, well, that's uh, did it feel it was, weird? I mean, did you feel did it feel yes. like um, I don't know, like a little like everything feels a little off when when all these rules are in place and you just feel weird while you're there? Totally. Oh yeah, you totally do. And yeah. and there's um, there's the natural feeling that you ask yourself, am I doing the right thing by doing this? With every new step that you take outside of the. I'm at home. I'm not leaving the house. Amazon is delivering my life to me in little brown boxes. Mm-hmm. With everything that you do outside of that, uh, every new step is like a a little bit of a guilt thing. Am I doing the right thing? Am I am I going to cause another spike? Am I going to you know? And it's completely natural to feel that way. Um, you just got to be careful, and you just got to you know pick the right things to to take those additional steps. Don't say, all right, well, I've been standing, uh, been staying at home and doing really well for the last couple of weeks. Now I'm going to go to Lake of the Ozarks and uh, rub my sweaty body against a whole bunch of other people who have uh, big sweaty bodies. And, and we're totally not going to cause another spike. Ugh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go do that sweaty body thing on a good year. <laughs> even even uh, not non pandemic. No, I don't care what time of year, what time of the, the pandemic it is. I'm not doing that. Right. Yeah. exactly. Uh, well, that so sounds anyways, like fun. Yeah, sounds nice. Totally safe. We yeah. tried going to my favorite, 
uh, our favorite, Tina's favorite, to a Mexican food restaurant on the way home. And we were sad to discover that even though their website said had a thing um, posted in May saying, we will be opening at the end of June, we probably should have checked it again. Uh, still not open and we're worried we're worried about the place because they don't even have a sign up that says when they're gonna reopen um, things are taped over like windows are taped over but there's not the signs still lit it's not like they've it's not like they've done anything to say yeah we're not coming back from this it's, it's like, like just, they like there. they said yeah. like they're somewhere curled up in a fetal position in the kitchen going we're not gonna open I don't think we're gonna open I'll feel good about this yeah <laughs> That or they just yeah. at some point you got to wonder some some restaurants just went crazy with like trying to come up with unique ideas to get to get mm -hmm. people doing curbside and deliveries and everything and then some people yeah. I assume were just like we just already had a hard year we can't I'm uh, who cares we're done yeah. bankrupt yeah. and walk away you know it could be exactly in their case it could be and I'm hoping that's not the case but no ham and definitely not Casa Bonita oh my god yeah. I don't even know I actually don't think Casa Bonita is going to come back from this they um because of their their garbage business model and let's face it their garbage food they um they can't really do curbside yeah um something. the the thing that people go there for isn't the um the special Costco cans of nacho cheese that they slather over everything it's the inside experience and if you can't go there and get that inside experience you're certainly not going to pull up to their their front door get a styrofoam box full of their uh uh their swill and take it home and eat it at home yourself. couldn't you get like one of those uh those round temporary pools outside and have you know rico <laughs> have, jumping have, in uh, cliff divers jumping off into that you certainly could yeah yes. a couple parrots Maybe. out there why not? Maybe we need to buy uh, a Casa Bonita, Scott, take it over and uh, and fix these oh management decisions that clearly haven't been made. Use all that Use all that South Park money. See if we can get something That's done. That's right. Now, I do, I want to tell you really, really quickly about um, a friend of the show, uh, Barry Folk, who mm -hmm. went to, who's, who's you know, been there every time we've had an Intertacular, every time we've done a, um, a Vegas meetup. He actually... The itch was just too strong for him to resist. I was originally going to go with him on this trip, but he went out to Vegas um, this last weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm, how'd it go? He um, he described the situation as uh, um, as amazing in some places, like uh, uh, surprising in some places, and then kind of scary in other places. Um, he sent me a photo of Fremont Street at eight o'clock on a Friday night, and it was you know, scattered, little scattered groups of people. Yeah. Um, as you would expect. Sure. Some wearing masks, some not wearing masks. Yeah. Some casinos were doing temperature checks as you went inside. Others weren't. But the biggest surprise was, um, no real changes to the craps tables. Uh, even though a lot of the other games like uh, video poker had plexiglass shields between each player. Yeah. But, but with craps, everybody's handling the same chips. Everybody's handling the same dice. You basically the only changes they made were you couldn't lean over the table, mm. um, which oh. I guess got you closer to the deal dealers. But still, everything else was like. I'm trying to think why you'd uh, lean over the table in the first place. Is it just to get closer to, to place the dealer? your to plop plop your chips? Oh, on the reach thing over and, and go. All right, I'm gonna put them in yeah. this thing. Okay, right. exactly. I but uh, yeah, I couldn't. I, I, I'm envious over parts of his trip because it just looked like such a good time. And he went over to Millennium Fandom Bar and they were they hadn't opened yet. Mm -hmm. um, they had a sign on their door that said, uh, "We are not yet open. This is the way." <laughs> <laughs> you know, as of you'd expect from a place did. like that. Yeah. The axe throwing place that we went to a couple of years ago for uh, TMS Vegas now serves beer, which I think is probably a bad idea. Oh, geez, that <laughs> combo. I don't know how I feel about that. Axes and beer. Yeah. Um, but uh, and the and the strip still not every place is open, and he saw maybe about twenty five percent of um, the usual crowds that you'd see on the strip. Interesting. So it reduced, but um, well, your original description sounds about like Vegas, uh, amazing in some parts, scary in others. Las Vegas, yeah. come visit. Everybody. Pretty much, yeah. Whether pandemic is going on or not. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, uh, that's cool. I'm glad he got to go and at least um, yeah. guinea pig it for he was us. A good it was a good pioneer, like good good way to report back and give us um, the details without us having to go there or me having to go there and see it for myself. I feel like if I was to go, I would probably spend most of my time Cosmo area zone mm -hmm. and 
in the more uppity uh, casinos because I'm guessing they do the temperature checks if Some, I had to guess. A lot of them were doing the temperature checks. Yeah, yeah. I would probably um, avoid Fremont, <laughs> I think. Because... The hardest thing for me would be, I mean, I'd probably avoid the casino. I'd go through the casino, get outside. Yeah. I think I'd, I'd restrict my areas to um, the pool, um, the strip if it wasn't if it wasn't super busy and I would just avoid the, the casinos altogether. Yeah, Nick, I might too. Kind well, of a tough thing. It's like, yeah. then what's the point? Yeah, just um, uh, watch a lot of <laughs> fountain shows and uh, I don't yeah. know. I don't yeah, know what else exactly. you do. Wonder why the M&M store still exists, you know, things like that. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, all right. We'll we'll That's see cool. as time goes on, but well done, Barry, for uh, getting out there. I should give yeah. him a, I should give him a Barry here. Hold on. Let me give him a Barry. Give him a berry. He deserves a berry. Hold on. Here we go. Berry. There you go. Thanks. There you go. Thanks, nice. Barry. All That's right. You, Barry. <clears throat> I've only known two berries in my entire life, like actual people named Barry, and he's one mm -hmm. of them. So there you yeah. go. The other guy was there like a go. junior high dude I knew back in junior high. <laughs> the no. double berry. Yeah, the double berry. <laughs> uh, all right. We are now entering a new phase of today, and that phase includes Brian Dunaway. Uh, it includes possible prizes. It includes winners, maybe losers. I don't know. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You never know, right? You don't know if you're going to win. You might win. You might lose. You might win. And you know, it's possible to have two winners. You guys can both get, you could name everything on the list and then nobody's a loser. Everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody wins at that. Oh, I Brian Dunaway. I heard a little Brandon, sound. Brian Dunaway just got an email. Yeah. Got an email there. You got an email there, buddy? I got an email here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you? You may. You may have. Here's yeah. your. Here's your Who music. All right. That music means it's time for Babel Royale. Chance for us to give some prizes to a listener and to hang out with our good friend Brian Dunaway. Hi, Brian. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hey. Hello. Uh, already uh, getting emails about how much you crack people up on Film Sack this weekend. Well done. Well done. Okay, good job. Yeah, well done. You, uh, well, you... that's okay because you guys crack me up. Oh. Especially Ibit and his impression that started to be an impression. And he's like, okay, <laughs> just like, ah, forget it. I knew that if I continued trying to do a Ralph Macchio impersonation, it was either going to go to Michael J. Fox <laughs> or go to Sylvester Stallone. Like, mm -hmm. it was either going to gonna really heavily go into the hey i'm a little you know punk who doesn't know anything kind of thing or go into hey mr miyagi yeah you why you uh why you you know why are you fronting pick, why are you, you know, why are you not opening this bonsai shop oh hey oh why you pick fronting? a lane Emmett. why are you fronting why are you front <laughs> that's a good one uh all right well uh all that is great but we have a listener on the line too let's find out who's been waiting very patiently good morning who's this Hi, this is Tom. Well, hello, Tom. Is this Tom's hello, Tom. norm? <laughs> this is a uh, Tiger brand. In the oh, chat room. oh, different Tom. All right. Oh, not All Tom right. Nook either. No, it sounds like you're no. in the corporate bathroom, being very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to win. I'm in the uh, in the home office. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice. Well, look, you got to keep it quiet wherever you're at. Uh, Tom, some good people to... have a large hadron collider in their home office. Yeah. It is totally understandable. Totally Tom. fine. Okay. That stuff's fine. <laughs> uh, Tom, it's good to have you here. We're going to see if we can win you some stuff, but Brian Ibbett here will have to explain what it is and what you could win. Oh, if I must, uh, I'm going to give Scott and Brian a topic. They're going to go back and forth, giving me answers that fit that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, a repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with an answer, the win is going to go to the other player. Tom, your job is to predict who's going to come out on top based on the topic today. You are playing for a couple Steam game prizes, uh, Ark Lash Legacy, mm -hmm. and oh. of Orcs and Men. Mm, are you gentlemen familiar one. with either one of those? I am. The I, second one. Yes, I have the second one as well, and it's good. It's very good. Excellent. Of Orcs uh, and these, Men. These come to us courtesy of Louis Loyo, so big thanks, or Louis, Louis Loyo, Louis Loyo. Anyway, <laughs> big thanks to listener uh, Louis. Uh, I'm going to say it's Louis. No, wait, wait. What was his name again? Louis. Louis, Louis Loyo. Yeah. Louis Loyo. Yeah. You said Louis Louis. The last name I'm pretty, yeah, Louis Louis. The, the last right, name right. I'm pretty sure I'm sp uh, pronouncing correctly. It's the first one could be either Luis or uh, Louis. Uh, Louis. Loyo Louis. rhymes with Froyo, and I like that. I'm down with that. That's right. Yeah. And that it. rhymes oh. with Froyo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you guys need a topic before you can start, and then you can start thinking about it. Um, there have been 
23 uh, actors, actresses, celebrities who have hosted Saturday Night Live five or more Shut times. Shut up. This is not, not, is not I it's just want to see how far I can Come on. Uh, no, this one comes to us from uh, Alex, a.k.a. Spicy Pickle. Um, uh, so he started out giving me a list of the top 12 most famous members of the 27 Club. Uh, this is the morbid topic. This is celebrities and, and musicians and things like that. People like that who died at the age of 27. Mm. Now, I can't do stuff like that, right? Because I can't say, oh, who's the most famous? Because that's subjective. Right. Um, I have to give you the full list. So it's not just the top 12 famous members. I have a list of 73 uh, people of any renown who passed away at the age of 27. Wow. Chances wow. are you're only gonna chances are you're only gonna name people from the top 12, but I have the other uh 61 people on the list just in case you happen to mention one of them. Okay. And, oh my uh, gosh. I've yeah. got to be prepared for this sort of thing. This is nuts. now this is that that list of like um you know famous uh singers, actors, um uh people who died at uh, far too young of course at the age of 27 mm -hmm. and uh uh, have formed what they call unofficially the 27 Club. All right. That is a morbid club. It it's is. a completely and totally morbid club. I know more of them than I feel like I should because this has always fascinated me. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel pretty good oh. about this topic, actually. Well, that's a good That's a good thing for our uh, contestant, Tom, to know. Tom, after hearing the... Uh, <laughs> the positivity surrounding this negative topic <laughs> from our two <laughs> contestants. Who do you want oh, to go yeah! first? And who do you think is going to win? I guess since I didn't hear any uh, votes of confidence from Dunaway, I'll go with uh, Scott to win. Uh -huh. and, uh, how about Scott to start? All right, we'll start and win. How about that? I like that. I like those chances. There you go. All okay. right. Start and win. Let's start with um, uh, Jim Morrison of the Doors. I Jim remember. Morrison, he's a very good one to start with. Yeah, Jim Morrison, um, uh, born in 1943, died in 1971 from heart failure, singer, lyricist, and leader of The Doors. Heart, heartbroken. That's a great documentary if you've never seen it, by the way. Just a, I the, watched one not too long ago. The biopic with uh, Val Kilmer? No, no, no. No, no, this is actually a documentary I was watching. Oh, a documentary. I watched it okay. a couple of months ago, and I'm trying to remember what I, where I saw it, but it was, it was, it was interesting. It was fascinating. But I'm going to go with... Uh, uh, the, someone that passed away during my time, mm -hmm. uh, not Scott's time, Jeremy mm -hmm. Morrison, mm -hmm. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Co <laughs> what do you mean not Kurt my Cobain. time? I, was I know, totally my <laughs> time. <laughs> You're insane. All right, how old are you, Scott Johnson? Uh, I'm, I looked. I was 1994. I had um, a very pregnant wife, and I remember where I was when he died. I remember hearing about it when I was at a place. I was in a mall. I was in a place that I heard about it, and I was like, oh, I'm so sad now. And I was sad. Like, Who? I was, I was bummed. I was super bummed. I was into him, man. I was only 23 years old or whatever, 24. I was super into I was super into Nirvana, and I was like, what? This can't oh, be. Oh, no, it's, I was on Morrison. I remember Kurt Cobain, and so I was, okay, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course you remember yeah. Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all remember where we were when we heard about oh, that. Oh, yeah, like, Morrison, Cobain. I don't I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, born in 67, <laughs> died in 1994. Uh, gunshot. He's a founding member, of course, lead singer, guitarist, songwriter for the band. But who Nirvana. did it? Yeah, but who did oh, it? It was the government. We know it was the government. It's always the government. Um, all right. Uh, Back to you, Scott. A more recent example. <laughs> no, I'm making him go forward. Uh, yeah, you are kind of. Uh, <laughs> let's go with. Oh, damn, why can't I think of her name? Oh, um, uh, ah. Amy, uh, Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Yes. Uh, uh, born in '83, died in 2011 from alcohol poisoning. Uh, she she wanted to go to rehab, but she said no, no, no. Yeah, those lyrics were more true than anyone thought. I'm gonna go mm -hmm. even closer. I'm gonna go even more further in the future. Okay. Wow. In the future. Okay. In the future. What do you know? What do you know that you're not telling us, Brandon? Just away? passed away this week. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm right on TMZ right now. Anton Yelchin. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a bummer. I hate that one. Born in 89, yeah. died in uh, 2016. Ran over by his own blunt car. traumatic asphyxia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, got, got ran over by his own car because of that weird shifter thing they have yes. in those cars. That oh, sucks. So, so tragic. And, and what a stupid uh, way to what die. What a bad way to die, right? Yeah. yeah. He had just a huge, bright career ahead of him. Really bugs me. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Okay. Oh, geez, you've jumped to the future so hard that I can't. Oh, Jimi Hendrix. Didn't Jimi so Hendrix die? Hard. Of, uh, at seven. Jimi Hendrix absolutely died. At no, the he was like 40. So. <laughs> right. uh, still alive. No, uh, born in 1942, died in 1970 from asphyxiation. We won't say what he asphyxiated on, uh, but you probably can guess. Pioneering electric guitarist, singer, and songwriter for the Jimi Hendrix Experience and Band of Gypsies. Jimi Hendrix. So don't, don't, uh, asphyxiation. Just, yeah, yeah, just breathe. You yeah. gotta, you can't. Yeah. 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 If you don't breathe, you don't yeah. live. I don't. That's know. right. I actually don't know you what know, he. Doesn't matter if you're 27 or 20. I, I what, mean, whatever. I, hey. I, I assume it was a drug overdose, right? Wasn't it? No. It was. Uh, I mean, his death was asphyxi asphyxiation, but it was. Uh, <laughs> it was on something. Uh, you know, your own something. Choked on his own, and we'll just leave it at that. Oh, vomit. Choked on his own. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. What? All right, all right. It might have been, might have been somebody else's vomit. You can't really dust <laughs> you don't for vomit. Know. Yeah. Saying, you can't all right, well, I'm gonna, dust for vomit. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip my toe back into Scott's era. Apparently, I don't know why. Whatever. <laughs> but during that time period, we also uh, Janis Joplin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also was yeah. another another drug yep. overdose. Take another little piece of her heart now. Uh, yeah. Drug overdose, uh, probably heroin. Lead vocalist, songwriter for Big Brother and the Holding Company. And um, died in 1970, October 4th, 1970. Okay. Now, okay. We're, now we're in the weeds. Um, <laughs> Agreed, because uh, that's most of the, the young folk we know. Now, we know a lot of dead celebrities, but you know, under sure. 27, that's... There's a few that I can think of that are kind of uh, yeah. That's this is where the right question the comes in. It's like, all right, how famous is this person? And that's why I wanted to be complete, just in case. Um, okay, well, <laughs> let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, oh, Brian Jones. Brian Jones is Brian one. Brian Jones, oh. yes. Yeah, forgot about him. That was Brian uh, Jones. Rolling Stones uh, co-founder, guitarist mm -hmm. and multi-instrumentalist, around in a swimming pool. Uh, Coroner's Report uh, calls it a death by misadventure. Mm. Death Which... by misadventure. Did they really? That's amazing. <laughs> wow. That yes. is a yeah. little bit terrible. Yeah. It is. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, I kind of don't, don't like love it. it. It sounds like a Monty Python death thing. It's, it does. It totally does. Right, yes. right. How do you die? Ah, misadventure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to go with uh, this past year, wasn't it? And he's pretty famous. Okay. Uh, Mac Miller. He was Mac under 27. Miller. Right? Mac Miller? Who's Mac Miller? The, the, uh, the vocalist. Uh, don't know. rapper. He's a rapper. Singer. Y'all remember this guy passed away last year? It was huge. No. Do you guys not keep talking? Look at keep Twitter. Talking. Keep talking. Mac keep Miller. Talking. Hum me Mac a few bars. Hum, hum me a few bars. Who does he? What's the song? I would know. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Uh, born in uh, January 1992, died in September uh, 2018. Which would make him 26. No! Oh, yes! 27. Wow. Yes! I mean, no, uh, no, it's not a yes. He, no! He, 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 he oh, it's why well, they said made him 26. Yeah. But he had to be no, 27. It's 27 club. You got to be oh, to be a I member of the was... 27 club. You have to be 27 oh, when you die. You have to be at 27 on the spot. So it's kind of like the price is right. Yeah. It's like uh, you. I went <laughs> not, under. So I, I was supposed to go. Right on. Okay. Well, I, think, I knew it'd be pretty close to the It was a good try. Yeah, he did. It was a good event. It was only a year In that off. case, yeah. I got lucky on a few because I totally misunderstood that question because I oh. thought you meant before 27, but like in their 20s. I didn't realize it had to be like. Oh, exactly no, no, no. It was exactly I don't know about the 27 club. Exactly I've never even heard of anything. Yeah. Did you have any more, Scott? Uh, oh, no, oh. I was out. So I'm really glad he blew that. I can't think of anyone else. So tell me who we missed. Or Yeah. You know. All right. So um, just names that you would have heard of. Uh, Jean uh, Michael Basquiat, the artist. Um, I would painter, have heard of his graffiti name. Artist. Yeah, uh, Bas Basquiat uh, worked with uh, Andy Warhol. Oh, um, I knew who that is. Yeah, um, yeah, they did a whole movie about him uh, yeah, just a few years that. ago. Yeah. Modern. He's a modernist. Movie. Dude, yeah, right. Hung out with Warhol. They were yeah. They, he, That's right. He was uh, an odd duck, see. that guy. Did he eat a lot of Campbell's soup? Uh, <laughs> he, finished, he ate all those cans of soup that uh, Eddie Warhol painted. That's what killed um, him! OD'd on Let's see. Chris Bell of the band Big Star. Um, Richie Edwards from Manic Street Preachers. That's one that I know about just because I'm I'm a fan. Mm. Um, Pete Ham of the band Badfinger. Uh, Robert Johnson. Crossroads sold his soul to the devil for the ability to play blues guitar. 
Mm. Mm. Okay. Nope. Okay. Don't know uh, him. Don't know him. <laughs> real, real good list there, Spicy Pickle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's my stripper name in uh, college, by the way. It was Spicy Pickle. That's what he used to call uh, it. B- b- Fat Pat, uh, American Fat rapper, Pat. member of Screwed Up Click. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't realize that it'd be 27 on the dot. I would have quit. <laughs> yeah. I just got lucky on a I few know. of these, apparently. Yeah, they're really rare to know. I, I just I, thought I, young people. That's the other yeah. thing, too, is I'll bet you could take the year, the age 28 and find just as many celebrities Easily. who died at 28. Easily. It was just, it was just the fact that you had Hendrix mm-hmm. and Cobain and Morrison. and I mean, you did have a big a big cluster of these all together. But, uh, Humans um, love patterns. Was, we love patterns, man. We, just we do. Love. We totally love looking for those. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, I don't know, uh, like, Ron McKernan was a founding member of the Grateful Dead, but I uh, don't think either of us, any of us really know, Mm-mm. really know much about yeah. that except for yeah. Jerry Garcia. Yeah. And, uh, Do you think he's a, you think he's grateful because he's an actual dead now? I, think he's <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. How those maybe. maybe. Yeah, yes. maybe. I don't know how those let guys me, work see it. Because there was the top 12 list. We didn't even get 12. Well, let me see who else is on this list, and it's like... Um, okay. Uh, Brian Jones. Oh, Jonathan Brandis. Uh, uh, can't think of He was is. Um, uh, leader of the 1990 miniseries adaptation of Stephen King's It. Jonathan oh. Landis. Uh, Richie Edwards, I mentioned. Uh, from I Man thought you said Curry. famous people. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, it's, a weird, it's a weird list because... Oh, this uh, dolphin, the chat rooms. I just brought the chat, chat up. The dolphin yeah, kid yeah. from uh, Sequest. That's right. Oh, is that what? The, that's, also who that, this? that's who that actor is that you mentioned from, uh, I think he the was Mike in uh, the It show, or the It movie. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Never Ending Story Thank 2, you. that kid. That's right. Oh, man. Thank you, uh, Spicy Pickle. Uh, <laughs> yep. You're still. Stri- really, yeah. You're, let's see. How many did we end up getting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. Seven. Now, oh, I, know, seven now, I, knew, now and, I know a new thing today, too, because I just learned something. I didn't know. There was that's right. It's called the 27 also, Club. So also, actually, there's yeah. a seven in the 727 Club. We got seven of them. What does it mean? Whoa. Um, and Bobby Franks pointed out that the uh, the last uh, quiz was also a 27. The animated MTV series was uh, there were 27 of them. So there's uh, you know Whoa. if you're looking for patterns, 27. We got seven right. There are two contestants in today's show. There are oh, two games two we're giving seven. away, which puts the two in front of the Whoa. seven. Oh, Whoa. lizard people, lizard people. All right, hey. Uh, well done there. Uh, all this yapping, I forgot his name. Hold on. <laughs> his name is Tom. Oh, yeah, Tom. His name is hey, Tom. Tom. We made jokes about it. Yeah, we did. Hey, Tom, well done, dude. How, how do you feel about your, your victory today? Oh, feel amazing. Oh, Thank that's you. good. Yeah. <laughs> good job. You get this. Well, winner, well winner, earned, chicken right? dinner. Good job. What are you going to say, Brian? Oh, I was going to say, well earned, right, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, yeah, this one came. This one did not come easy. Uh, well done. All you got to do, though, is email Brian Ibbett over here with uh, yes. your uh, info so he can send you your codes. That's at coverville at gmail.com. Well done. All right. Brian Dunaway, later today. Scott Jensen. 3.30 Mountain Time. Brian. We're talk about video games? Damn straight we are. Ooh, I wow. played something called okay. Monster Train. Mm, I played something called Super Paper Mario, the Origami you King. You suck. <laughs> I got a copy. So I had something here. Oh, go ahead. Anna Krakatow pointed out that the movie Crossroads was based on Robert Johnson, who sold his soul to the devil and and uh, uh, blues blues fame. Uh-huh. Uh, it was based on uh, Robert Johnson. The, the the movie, the biopic, yeah. starred uh-huh. Ralph Macchio. Whoa. <gasps> Patterns. So many degrees of something. Patterns. <laughs> exactly. I see patterns. Exactly. Anyway, right. uh, uh, back to the promo. What were you saying? Oh, yeah. So today, 3.30 <laughs> Mountain Time, the boob show right here at frogpants.tv. So if you want to watch it and catch it, you can do it live or you can get the podcast later. It's a great time if you're uh, looking for a little Dunaway and Johnson in your yeah. life. Uh, yeah. Brian Dunaway, anything else you'd like to say before I unceremoniously kick you out of this phone call? Yeah, don't, don't hang up on me. Bye. All right. That was it. <laughs> he just gets the one chance. Even asked, man. Yeah. Jeez, you just get asked. the one chance. I don't give extra chances. 
Wow. All right. Uh, we are going to uh, take a quick break and then come back with Steven. A quick note here, though. Uh, I wanted to let people know the current Geek Chronicles Kickstarter is almost over the finish line, all right? So if you go there and check it out, you'll be surprised how close we are and how easy it would be for you to help us get over that line. We're a little over halfway done with the entire time, and we're almost there. Support.CurrentGeek.com. Uh, Chronicles is rad. At the end of today's show, you'll hear a, uh, a longer promo that Hammond put together, and it's really good. It'll give you a, even a, a better idea of what this thing's going to be about. So uh, stick around till the very end of today's show, those listening at home, and uh, let us know what you think. And check it out, uh, support.CurrentGeek.com. All right, Brian, let's take a break. Yes. When we come back, Stephen and uh, and Stephen, really. Stephen, a mashup and some other stuff. There's no Daryl today. <laughs> That's right. So uh, stick around for that. But we need a song. You got one over there? We need a song. I've got an in the middle for you today. A band called Victory Kid, a uh, Southern California pop punk ska uh, band. These guys are great. They've got a brand new album coming out. Um I want you to see that's a reptilian eye. For you guys who haven't heard about the reptilians and all of this junk that we got going on right now, this is going to be a big time awakening message. These are his ribs. (laughs) This is the morning stream. That's some sweet weed, man. back everybody uh welcome back to the thing yes by the way that may be our new 30 goal lady this lady's awesome <laughs> she's just uh she's got all kinds of ideas i love it yeah, yeah. she sounds like a pat robertson uh, like she wants to step into the 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 eventual hole that pat robertson will leave one day <laughs> there's gonna be a pat a robertson size hole one day someone's gonna fill it <laughs> that's right uh, that song was great. Remind folks uh, what it is again, where they can get Will it. Will do. It was uh, the band is called Victory Kid. The brand new song is called Stepping Out. I like that Previous name. hit from them is called Tuck Frump. Uh, really? <laughs> yes. That's great. Uh, I like the name uh, Victory Kid. It sounds like an Victory old Kid. Sega Master System game or something like that. Something yeah, it kind of does, right? Victory I'm Kid. Play some Victory Kid. Yeah, Let's put a lot of quarters in the Victory Kid back in the day. All right. Uh, time now for Steven Schleika. You know him, you love him. If I can mm-hmm. find him. Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's not under Steven. It's under Major. He's got a brain. Major Steven Spoilers. Yes, Mr. Ma- Major, soon to be Colonel Steven Spoilers. <laughs> Steven. Uh, when you say major, it's not meant to be a rank. It's meant to be major, like, whoa, big, huge, mm-hmm. right? We have that right, don't we there, Steven? Yeah, I say major, you say spoilers. Major. <laughs> spoilers. Major. Spoilers. Spoilers. All right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> we played Marco Polo, Polo before. We know what's up. Hey, uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? Exactly. Uh, it's Steven Schleicher, everybody. He is the purveyor of all things Major Spoilers at Majorspoilers.com. And, of course, comes to us from Hayes, Kansas, where each Monday we discuss some of the nerdier topics in his world. And uh, today is no different. Let's talk a little bit about what's been going on. Uh, for example... A couple of comic book recommendations this week. I need these oh, yeah. actually because I'm I'm all back to reading comics on my iPad Pro and I need I need some recs. So come okay. on in here and do it. Well, would you, would you how would you classify that song that Brian just played? Uh, ska meets a little bit of punk meets. Uh, no, yeah, ska punk. Mm-hmm. I'd call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe a little. Uh, to me, it sounded a little heavy. Yeah, heavy metal stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, then Got you a little probably, rough at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little Look, angry. Scott, you would probably really appreciate this growing up uh, when you did yeah. uh, back in the day uh, with a Death Knight's death metal from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Ooh. So you know, Scott talks a lot about uh, the different types of uh, heavy metal bands that he used to listen to back in the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we all know some of those great album covers. Well, imagine a lot of that done with Greg Capullo with Scott Snyder behind the wheel. And you've got the follow up to their last Dark, uh, dark Knights series. Uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal out now. The second issue just came out last week. It's fairly interesting. I think, uh, Scott, you guys would really like it. 
for the art alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, the story's a little weird, but uh, you can pretty much pick it up uh, fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think it's it's one that you guys might want to check out. I love Capullo's art, so you had yeah. me with that. Um, going loved all it. the way back to the Spawn days. Oh, yeah. His Spawn, his work on Spawn was what kept me going in that series. Uh, mm-hmm. Once he once McFarland brought him on to take over art duties, and I just thought, this guy, gotta you got to keep your eye on this dude. And his Batman New 52 run with Snyder was amazing. Uh, so, yeah. And I've been looking at this kind of from afar for a while, wanting to sort of see what this is about and check it out. And I just haven't gotten around to it. So, good recommendation. Uh, can you tell me, is this the same course? Well, okay. So, there's that weird alternate Batman that's like half Joker, half yeah. Batman thing. Is Batman that part of laughs, the, yes. Yeah. Is that part of this universe? Is this a different yes, thing? Yes, that, okay. that is the... Sp- yeah, so in the very first uh, Dark Knights uh, Metal series, which came out, what, a year or two ago, yeah. uh, that's when he was introduced, uh, and now this is the follow-up to that, where basically he's won, and they figured out that there are so many crises going on in in their universe. Why are there so many crises? They need an anti-crisis. Mm. Well, this kind of sounds like anti-Christ a little bit A little bit, sure. For all those heavy metal fans. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, so go check that out. It's, it's pretty interesting. All right, I'm and into it's it. A very cool aesthetic. Yeah, and now, it's a, it's a the, little one-off, right? Like, they're not, or is it more? It's a, I want to say it's a six-issue miniseries, but it may be 12. Okay. But um, I, I'm pretty sure it's six. Okay, and available on, uh, what, like DC Unlimited or whatever the heck it's called? Yeah, well, probably not DC Unlimited, but it's definitely available on Comixology and uh, pretty much any place you can buy digital comic books. Okay. Not part of Comixology Unlimited, though, if you're subscribing to that. Uh, I, I, you would have to look and see because they change those out so often. My guess is no because it's a brand new book. Yeah. And the new books tend to not be on the Unlimited stuff um, because that's where they're going to make all their money. That makes you sense. Know, you're going to pay five, five bucks for a brand new comic where, you know, six months from now, you'll pay 99 cents for it. That's true. That's a very good point. All right, so that's the thing you can all uh, get your get your hands into there. Uh, if you are a fan of a different type of Batman, mm-hmm. maybe you like the animated series, maybe that's your jam. Uh, DC also has Batman The Adventures Continue, which is set in that Batman animated universe. And this is a digital... Uh, I, I can't remember if this is a digital first or a digital only release, but you can only get this on uh, Comixology and the other digital services. This one probably won't see print... Uh, for a while if it does come to print mm. but uh, definitely digital first if you want to go check it out it's um, i think they sell these for 99 cents so they're pretty easy to get into they come out weekly or bi-weekly and so you can get a whole issue's worth for like three bucks um over the course of a couple of weeks how's the how's the art on those are they do they stick pretty close it to the looks 90s really series? good they yeah. they stick to the to the bruce tim uh model mm-hmm. which looks good the only thing that really kind of is problematic for me is they don't shade it right. Oh. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, there is shading, but the the colors kind of don't have that deep dark darkness that we saw in the animated series, mm. but it's still very solid. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at some of it now. It's very Bruce Tim-esque for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it, it's borrowing off that model. I think he's one of the uh, people who involved in it as well, so. Okay. All right, yeah. nice. Uh, but I was curious about that one. I didn't know it was so cheap. That seems easy to get into. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 99 cents. Really great. In fact, DC has been doing this a lot for, gosh, 13 weeks now. Yeah. Uh, every day of the week, they will release a new digital first series for 99 cents. Jeez. So they've got a Superman, a Wonder Woman, Flash, Batman. They've got uh, Harley Quinn, black and white and red. Uh, a whole bunch more that you can go check out under that DC tab over on Comixology in their digital first line. And then those eventually all get collected into single issues that they sell for like four bucks or something like that. Okay. All right. Very cool. Yeah. This is, I yep. um, definitely want to see this one too, man. Look at all these recommendations. All right. Tell me yeah. about empire. Number one spelled E M P Y R E like pyre, M-P-R. like a fire pyre. Yeah. So this is something definitely for Brian, uh, being more probably of the Marvel fan, uh, than Scott. Uh, but, uh, what happens if the Cree and the scrolls decide that, Hey, maybe we should team up and let's mm. go beat up on the fantastic four and the Avengers. That is Empire. Mm. Wow. Okay. And that this launched like a last series or a yeah. A this crossover? is their, this was supposed to be their big spring event, but uh, because of COVID and and all the comic shops and the distributors shutting down, they weren't able to get this out. So Empire kicked off last week. Uh, it looks very very interesting, especially if you're into the big space uh, battle stuff of the Marvel universe. Um, and there are multiple tie-ins that will continue for 
the weeks and months to come. So is that, is that uh, supposed to be the? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but is that, I just looked at the cover. And it looks like there's. Is that supposed to be the Hulk in the background there? That's not. Uh, no, nope, no, that's that young is Hulk. A young Hulk or Hulkling, Hulkling or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He's, oh. the, he's the, I think he's the leader behind all of this. All right. I didn't know he's that was the even son the of Hulk and, uh, Don, is he the son? I know, I know there's a couple of the young Avengers that are, that are offspring of, uh, of maybe she Hulk, she Hulk could be the mom, maybe possibly. Well, they're cousins. That would be gross. That would be gross. That is gross. That is gross. So hold on. I see, uh, and that's a whole category on a certain website. It's a very concerned looking Iron Man. He looks very concerned. He face. always looks concerned. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right. right. I, that so looks the younger, fun. the new Ghost Rider. Look at that. That cover looks great. And I have not read anything yet with the new, the newly brought back Fantastic Four with the, uh, um, yeah, the Dan Slott was doing Mr. that. Fantastic. One. Yeah. Yeah. I have not read anything on that either. I am a big fan of Dan Slott's writing, um, mm -hmm. but I have not really read anything with Fantastic Four either. I didn't know there this was a new good, Ghost Rider series. Look at this. Yeah. I love yeah, Ghost Rider. Check out, check out Cosmic Ghost Rider. Really? Yeah, where he goes into space, and then it's basically like he has the power of the Punisher plus Silver Surfer. And, and he's the Ghost Rider. That's what, uh, awesome, what does he do as far as uh, uh, motorcycle in space? <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure Cosmic Ghost Rider has the um, Herald of Galactus uh, stuff on him. Okay. Now, don't quote me on that because it's been a while since that series came out. <laughs> I'm all in, dude. Enough. That sounds great. I love Ghost Rider comics. Some of my favorites of all time. Yeah. Yeah, I think the movies are heaping piles of poopy, but I think the... I think yeah, there's... Frank Castle is the Cosmic Ghost Rider. That's right. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank Castle, the the Punisher. The Punisher. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> All right. I don't know how we got there, but I'm in. I'm and in. You have to read the series and find out. Yeah. Uh, also, we got some news here that Universal Pictures launched a comic book imprint with Grant Morrison. What is this? Tell me about this. That is very interesting. This is something that we see a lot of uh, studios doing. Uh, Legendary Pictures has their own comic book imprint. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, now that Disney, Disney's always had their comic book imprint for years. Marvel Studios has Marvel. Uh, we have a 20th Century Fox has been using Boom and, and others. But Universal Pictures is now getting into the deal with their Universal Studios comic book imprint. It is going to be called UCP, and uh, the first book out of the gate will be co-written by Grant Morrison, which is a big win for the movie studio. It's called Proctor Valley Road, and it will come out later. I, I'm thinking it's coming out later this year. Now, the interesting thing is uh, Universal Studios, even though this is their comic book imprint, they are not going to release these comics through their own line. This will actually be released through Boom Studios. Uh, so be on the lookout with that. And uh, this, or I'm sorry, it's uh, Image Comics. I'm sorry, is there is there a printer? Okay, so clearly this is Keanu Reeves and all these and all uh, this no, art. No, that's a different. That's a different thing. This is Keanu Reeves is doing his own comic book series called Berserker with Boom Studios oh. uh, that will come out in October of this year. <clears throat> And yeah. basically, what if uh, Keanu Reeves was a mortal, kick-ass, badass man, yeah. and he went through history just killing people left and right, and that is Berserker. So, okay. uh, so two big names, two big uh, little things coming out for Boom Studios and Image Comics in the months ahead to be on the lookout. So for. what is that, like time-traveling John Wick? Kinda? No, more like Immortal, Immortal, uh, okay. the Highlander. Okay. I, I don't know about the oh. cutting off the head part, but a guy who's been around <laughs> since the uh, the beginning of time and goes through and, and kicks ass there can only be one okay yeah uh that sounds great too <laughs> i don't know why that sounds good it shouldn't sound good but it sounds okay to me i mean it looks like keanu in the in the uh, images it looks like you know there was a john wick comic uh two years ago i believe from boom studios yeah and so um you know you can you can go and see what they did with that uh this is being co-written by keanu reeves so a lot of people are very excited to see what what he comes up with. Will there be lots of woes and things like that? They write probably uh, not. Oh, okay, that's too bad. Seems like an opportunity oh, he missed not. there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, well, excellent. This is great. Lots of good stuff. I'm in the mood right now for comic. Yeah, Korea. don't forget this week is San Diego Comic Con, and even though the comic convention is not being held in a physical location, they are taking everything online. So you can go up to the uh, Comic Con dot org website. And you can find all the links to the YouTube videos that they'll have throughout the week. 
Most of the publishers have at least one or two things going on, and there's always something there for everybody. Some TV studios are doing a few things. I don't think there are any big movie panels going on, uh, but uh, YouTube and the San Diego Comic-Con website, Comic-Con International, is where you'll want to go this week to find all the latest comic book news or check out BajorSpoilers.com. I was going to say, I'll bet it's a bunch of this stuff will be on the side like it always is. Some so. of it already is, like the Berserk, yeah. Berserker stuff. They'll be talking more about that during the Boom Studios panel. Um, I forget what the panel, uh, probably during the Image Comics panel, they'll be having the Grant Morrison bit. Uh, I'm just very interested to see how they're going to pull off all these live streams simultaneously mm -hmm. on their YouTube channel uh, and um, not have everything just blow up in their faces. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, I'm, yeah really I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out the New Mutants uh, panel. Huh. Yeah, I'm sure everyone else is. I'm sure when it comes to, uh, I don't know how they're going to do question and answers. But I'm sure most oh, of the right. questions will be, hey, when's this when's movie coming out? When's this coming out? out? Yeah. When, when's, it, you, when's it coming out? <laughs> could you just make this uh, uh, on demand at home? We'll pay. We'll pay. That that would be funny if every single question was, so when's <laughs> this movie coming out? They'll probably do um, audience picked questions and stuff as they go. I oh, would imagine. Yeah, the interesting thing that is going to be really weird about this being virtual this year is one of the things that happens, especially with... Uh, Nickelodeon and, you know, all the, the cartoon networks and some of the studios is they will bring and say, oh, how about we watch the entire episode mm -hmm. right here before it's, you know, before it airs. Mm -hmm. And that's a big draw for a lot of people to be able to see, you know, full episodes of whatever their favorite cartoon show is or the big season finale of a particular show. They're not going to be able to do any of that this year. Or if they do, that would be a really surprise to take it to YouTube first and not and not uh, put it out on their own streaming. They just got to so, hurry so that, up. That will be interesting as well. They just got to hurry up with that New Mutants thing because these kids are all going to be in their 50s by the time this thing <laughs> no, the sequel, out. The sequel is going to have to take place in the future. Yeah. It's the uh, yeah. days of future past for the New Mutants. <laughs> right. They're all the, old. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, one of the actors tweeted out, he's like, uh, this was like three jobs, two relationships, and something else ago when we shot this movie yeah. and mm -hmm. it's still not out yeah it's forever ago the clothes are going to start looking out of style or something i don't know what's going to happen but they got to yeah. hurry up <laughs> eventually you don't have a movie if you don't get it out like you just don't have one you just have footage you meant to use for something that didn't go anywhere and so it becomes legend so either put it out or don't i guess anyway uh more on that and coverage of all of it at Majorspoilers.com. Steven, anything else you want to mention before we go today? Oh, it's going to be warm today in many parts of the country, and uh, if you're outside and about, uh, don't forget to wear your mask and stay hydrated. Nice. You need a straw for a little hole in your mask. No, wait, that doesn't work. How, how do you get the? How do you stay hydrated with your mask on? What do you do? Stick a straw through the side of your face, or how, how do you get it in there? <laughs> he's muted. Away. Oh, he's muted. All right, he left. Yeah, he's gone. He doesn't want to answer those questions. Why would you ask that question? I think a silly straw. What you know? That's what we need. Like a little a mask with a built-in silly straw. Mm -hmm. Like with and some so kind of little like, lip apparatus in there, and just have it yeah. zip out the top. Go back. Go up exactly. to your hat where your drink is. I'm all in. Let's make. Let's make the pandemic fun again. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, we got a new. We got okay. So we have a name now. Finally, for this thing where we help people out. Uh, yes. It's called fan service. There you go. This is great. <clears throat> who ca who came up with it? Crap! I meant to give him credit. Dang it! Oh, I'll find it on it's in Twitter. Yeah. You go and start reading that, and I'll tell you by the end of your spiel. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna make a little sounder for it too. I just haven't done it. But anyway, Jim Jensen, a local, also known as I B to bloke in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Uh, he sent this in, and he said, uh, Patrick Rothfuss, author of The Name of the Wind and World Builders, is raising money under Geeks Doing Good 2020's fundraiser via the Indiegogo this week. Uh, if you go to Indiegogo.com and just search for the project Geeks Doing Good, you'll find it. Uh, World Build Builders is selling geeky merchandise in the, in the charity fundraiser. Lots of uh, art and prints and t-shirts, books, PPP masks, all that stuff. Uh, some are in very limited quantities. World Build Builders is a geek-centered nonprofit supporting humanitarian efforts worldwide. More info at worldbuilders.org. It's a great one. Very cool. It is a great one. Well done. Uh, Will DeMott is uh, Will uh, DeMott. the person who suggested that. Will DeMott. Yep. Uh, thanks, dude. Great name. I'm going to make a sounder for it. You win. The, you're the winner. You've won. <laughs> you well win absolutely nothing yeah. good day sir you get zip but you do get a mashup i'm gonna play a mashup now this is a ah, that's the song we're not playing that this is a monday mo <laughs> monday morning mashup 
from uh, TMS Jamie. He sent this in, TMS Mashups, and uh, it's called What's in the Jar? All right? <laughs> oh, God. Here's, we'll find out what that is. Here you go. <laughs> Brian, st- Brian stretch. stretches I'm are... all about the stretches today. Mm-hmm. They don't feel as good if you don't make a dumb noise while you do them. Ooh, feminine care. Hold on. <laughs> this isn't normal fancy dress lady dressing this is like 1920s fapper kind of business oh really so then i take a closer look let's, at the dude let's let's clarify though uh you mean flappers did i say fapper ah oh, shoot 1920s fappers gosh dang it it's flappers you're right flappers <laughs> Not fabbers. Yeah, two totally different things. Yeah. Yeah, the power. The it's dark you, side. Joy. Ah, there's me. something in my nose. I feel like there's something in my nose. <laughs> this worm was a fourth stage larva of the pseudo do do to no pseudo da terra nova ara- arazanavi pseudo terra nova <laughs> you, you run to put extra doughs in there i do There's just one dough i do pseudo terra nova azarasi i can't figure it out if somebody would have pulled out one of those masks you hold with a stick and it just covers their eyes eyes and, wide shut yes kinda. yes yeah. i was worried about that there was some kind of weird <laughs> sex thing going on you know? well then it would be fappers you know, it would be a lot of fappers <laughs> going to that party all fappers no flappers <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Went st- or uh, went. St- uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> snow? Not snowboarding. What's wrong with me? What are they called? Sk- jet skiing. Jet skiing. Oh, okay. All right. Jeez, Louise. So if you're some kind of mutant with a, a strange butthole yeah. placement, you can. Right. Uh, it's actually. <laughs> it's over. actually on my side. Yeah. It's on my hip. It's way over here. Move that. In the center of my right butt cheek. <laughs> Twenty-five blonde women yep. and a guy named Steve. Lidl. Lidl. You have, Please you have... go to the Lidl and buy me some iguana head bolognese. <laughs> Are you saying the lizard was not part of your meal? We will launch an entire investigation thoroughly. <laughs> you bought the jar of ragu with lizard head on the label. All you have left is a candle made from Gwyneth Paltrow's JJ. It's not made from her <laughs> <laughs> They They were creating scents. For uh, for candles, she walked in and said, "Oh wow, that one smells like my vajayj." Uh-huh. That, that's how it is. It, it wasn't even like, "All right, Gwyneth, uh, here, um, queef into this jar and take it to the lab, and we're going to try and replicate that scent uh, for our." <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny! <laughs> I can't, still can't believe you said that out loud. <laughs> a brave man to take a drink during that because I knew it was coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I still can't believe you said it. It's so funny. <laughs> All right. Well done there, Jamie, as always. Well, one of the seven words you can't say on television. No. You can totally say that word. Yeah, not going to say it now, but we could totally say that word. We totally could. Uh, all right. What do we do now? What do we do now? Um, oh, we do this. We have a quick email from Lee. Lee wrote in and says, controller button arrangement. All right. As of a few months ago, you can remap. Okay, because you were complaining. You are saying, man, when I go from the yeah. Switch to the PlayStation, I have to change my brain around. Do you think about the bottom of the little diamond buttons mm. or the right of the diamond little buttons? Yeah. Well, as of a few months ago, you can remap the buttons on your Switch. No more confusion when switching consoles. Although the Switch will throw up a warning message every time you turn it on. Typical Nintendo annoyance. Thanks, Lee. Anyway, uh, you, they, you can do this now. So if you're used to... I could do that. It doesn't mean I should, right? Because then yeah. it's like I go play Nintendo with somebody else or, uh, you know, it's going to it's gonna mess me up one way or the other. That's it may a, not be now. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Because if you went and played, say, Mario Kart with a friend... Right, or at uh, HyperX gonna... Esports uh, Lounge yeah. in Vegas. You could change it, but you'd have to change it every time you went anywhere or did anything. Yeah. Yeah, no, can't do that. You know what? I I, I do yeah. appreciate Lee telling us about that because that is that is cool. You can do that, but um... I actually knew about it, but I haven't used it at all, so I totally forgot. Mm-hmm. Totally forgot that was a thing. But if you want to, you can. All right, mm-hmm. uh, thanks for that. If you want to send your own emails into the show, themorningstream at gmail dot com, or just use the website. There's a quick little form on there. Uh, also, if you have not yet done so, check out our Patreon. All kinds of great rewards if you do that. And uh, this week we will be uh, doing a bonus episode on Friday. TMSPM, it's called, and you get that by being a patron. A dollar or more, that's it. A buck, imagine a buck a month. A month, not a week, not an episode. A month. So cheap, so cheap, so inexpensive. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Check it out, patreon.com slash TMS. Everything else is at frogpants.com slash TMS. And now we play a song and say goodbye. Brian? That's right. And um, by the way, coming up in, I think, a couple weeks, we're we're figuring out the day, but I believe it's going to be july 31st the friday we're doing the um the next right. play date patreon play date right, we, we, were trying to, we talked about this with uh 
we were working it yes. around Monica's schedule or something. And that's right. So thirty first, yeah. yes, July thirty first, um, Patreon play date. There you go. Which is good because Tina and Mark go uh, for a little uh, oh. uh, my birthday trip. Uh, might be doing that that weekend. So getting away, I, are you? Get that early, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I was gonna try. We were gonna try and stay at the Stanley Hotel, the the Shining Hotel. Nestus Park. Yeah. Here's a couple of dumb things about that. They make you uh, schedule two days. If you go on the weekend, you have to pay for two days. So basically, you have to stay there Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. And it's way more expensive, especially if you want to be in what they call a spirited room, which is one of the rooms where they've had good, 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 good ghosts. So really? They had they sell that as an option. They sell that as an option. No so way. It's like, yeah. Can so you can you request? Can you say? Can you request like, hey, can we get a scabby naked lady in the tub or? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's can, um, part of their turndown service. Can you get the? Can I have a hallway where the blood comes gushing out of the out of the uh, elevator? Uh, that'd be the fourth floor elevators. Oh, Absolutely. Yes, man. sir. We can put you in a room right outside those, and here's a towel. Okay. Um. Now, now I'm tempted. You get a tennis ball in your room that you can hurl at the wall at the, as hard as you can, and a typewriter that only types one sentence over yeah. and over and over and over. Can you again. ride a little uh, a little three wheeler around the building? You'll find that in the closet, sir. It's right there. Jeez, what a full service opportunity this is. I know. I, that's the other thing I really wanted to like um, go there and uh, and actually have a big wheel and mm-hmm. film myself riding around the hallway in the big wheel. It'd be worth getting kicked out of the Stanley Hotel <laughs> just to ride a big wheel down the down the hall. Dude, it'd be worth getting kicked out of there to say you were kicked out of there for riding that around the hall. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh my gosh. Yes. Do you know who I am? Do you know? Yep. You know you have to do, Brian. You know you have to do. Do I do you know who I almost was? Yeah, do you know I was almost him? Do you know? <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's uh, play a right. song. What do you got here for me? This one is going out to Dreadnecks, a.k.a. Logan, in the tadpool. Hi, Scott and Brian. Recently, my wife developed a cough at the start of her three-week staycation to take care of our five-year-old daughter while I focused on working from home. It's been great having her here, and I was dismayed to find out she wasn't feeling well. She's currently attempting to get a COVID test and found out that her work had a positive test that they hadn't disclosed to her shortly before she went on vacation. Great. Wonderful. Uh, if you could play something happy to take my mind off things, I like the band Apples in Stereo, but anything would help. She's going to quarantine in the bedroom while I sleep on the couch and take care of her and our daughter. 